Yes, you read the title of the video correctly, and no, it is not a mistake, but once again, thanks to the power of mod technology, or more specifically, the work of Flightska, I hope I'm pronouncing that okay, we now have the wonderful wacky weapon of Sheogorath in the Fallout universe. The official name is the Wabagat, which is absolutely brilliant by the way, and as you might expect, it has all of the same effects as the Wabajack, specifically the version from Skyrim. If you need a refresher, that means the Wabagat is capable of hurting an enemy with regular fire, frost or electric damage, turning people into money, goo or any other random item, disarming people, it can also briefly turn enemies to your side, summon a creature, or just turn an enemy into another creature. There could honestly be more, but those are just the ones that I know off the top of my head. As you might expect, this weapon completely breaks Fallout 4, as the game was never designed with a weapon like this in mind. But, if you ask me, that just makes it more fun. So, today, like usual, I'm going to see if I can beat Fallout 4's main quest by only attacking with the Wabagat. Also, due to the weapon possessing multiple ways to essentially instantly kill any opponent, I will be playing the game on very hard, just to make things a bit more challenging. Now, with all that out of the way, let's begin. Staying in line with the theme of randomness, I decided to use a Fallout 4 character randomizer to decide my name and starting stats. Say hello to Nimble Dean, everybody. Can't complain about his stats too much, as they are pretty even across the board. The first thing I do though is grab the I'm Special book and bump my charisma from 2 to 3 so that I can grab the Lone Wanderer perk. It's a must-have perk for me in 90% of these runs, seeing how I rarely, if ever, take companions along. Who needs friendship when you have the Wabajack, after all? Speaking of the weapon, you may have noticed from the test footage that it was a 44 Magnum, meaning I will need 44 rounds. The more astute players among you will probably realise that the 44 rounds aren't particularly common in the early game. Not to worry, I already have a workaround for that, because I am just that good. First off, I mark Red Rocket on the map. Weird how given the name, that's where they chose for you to meet your dog companion by the way. Anyway, once there I just start heading east until I reach this small pump station with a few mole rats burrowing and nibbling at my ankles. It's an almost blink and you'll miss it moment, but there are 544 rounds on the ground here that I grab, and then I sprint off further east. When I was testing the gun, I noticed that it doesn't start with any ammo, so this will more than likely be necessary. The reason being is that the gat is located inside the Museum of Witchcraft, meaning I am more than likely going to come face to face with a Deathclaw, very intent on eating my skin. The journey there was rather boring. I managed to level up though due to all the locations I was able to find. Naturally, I took the Lone Wanderer perk. Most of the perks I take will probably be defense based ones, as after all, why would I bother grabbing damage upgrades if they are ultimately worthless. I could take the Gun Nut perk a few times so I could eventually construct the ammo press to make 44 rounds. However, by the time I get access to the rank of the perk I'll need to actually create more of that ammo, I'm probably going to be close to the end of the main quest, or at least I hope. Making it to the Museum of Witchcraft, unfortunately for us, the Wabagat is sitting on the table right before you encounter the Deathclaw, so at the very least I will be able to fight back. There is also a piece of clothing meant to look like Shergorath's. They aren't very good, but I will wear them for a while nonetheless. Despite having one bullet less than enough to kill anything that moves, I was lucky enough that as soon as the Savage Deathclaw laid its eyes on me, I was able to get off one shot that promptly turned him into a can of yellow paint. I grab said Deathclaw paint, as well as the pristine egg, and go on my merry way. Four bullets will not get me very far, although if I follow the road north of here, conveniently enough towards the Deathclaw mother whose baby we are delivering, we can also come across this unmarked shack that belongs to Leonard Murr. Leonard is the MVP of the run. Why? Simple, he sells 44 rounds to the player at any level, and better yet, he sells a lot of them. Right now he has 81 bullets up for grabs, so naturally I take them all. I made sure to loot everything from inside the Museum of Witchcraft, the real money makers being the blood soaked clothes and weapons of the formerly alive gunners. Not only am I able to get all the 44 rounds, but I also take all of his money as well. Things could really not be going any better. Cut that. Returning the egg to mum grants us an absurd amount of experience and pushes me to nearly level 4 already. For my level 3 perk I took Cap Collector. I know I literally just said that defensive based perks were the way to go, but if I'm going to be dropping a lot of money on ammo, I may as well try and get it as cheap as I can. I should mention that like any other merchant, Leonard's stock will refresh every 48 hours so long as I'm far enough away. This means I shouldn't really need to worry about ammunition for the rest of the run. It is me we're talking about however, so I'm sure I'll manage to screw something up somehow. No time like the present to get the ball rolling on the main quest, so I figured I would head on down to Concord to mentally mess with the raiders for a time. 
Things are off to a very good start as I reduce my first raider to a puddle, and then proceed to go all sub-zero on his two nearby friends. The freeze doesn't kill them of course, so a few more shots will be needed. Popsicle number one ends up exploding into fireworks that spawn in a box of bobby pins, whereas number two morphs into a mirelurk. Makes sense, we all evolved to become crabs at some point after all. The effect I get on the mirelurk is great, by the way, my next shot is just instant death. No colourful transformations or elemental nonsense, no, just straight up instant heart attack gun. Inside and the first raider I shoot gets snapped out of existence, followed by more crabs. I swear they can transform into other creatures. I also got my first normal kill with the gun, oddly enough that's the weird thing. The final two raiders trying to break down the door get turned into a rad bit and a deathclaw, truly got some yin yang going on there. The rabbit is of no concern. And to be fair, neither is the death claws. I manage to freeze him in place with a lucky roll of the dice, and then one more follow up turns him into a surgical journal. So I guess I actually have the ability to basically turn enemies into perks. That's actually really cool. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, this leads me to the difficult side of using the Wabagat. Enemies that are turned into objects, or even sometimes animals, or goo, are not counted as being killed. As you can see, the objective is telling me I need to take out two more raiders, and yet their locations lead me to nothing. Long story short, there was no real workaround for this, so I just had to leave the Minutemen and continue on south. To vent my frustrations, I turn Wolfgang into a feral ghoul, who promptly starts to rip Simone to shreds. It all would have worked out well too if Patrick didn't decide to get involved, causing me to attack Ghoulgang and make him a chicken, which very shortly became gooified. On the bright side, I managed to get some good food whenever I procured some sweet roll shaped Simones. Just like with Preston, this does not count as me dealing with either side of the quest, so no XP for me as I continue heading towards Park Street Station. Yeah, I figured I may as well just tackle the main quest now and worry about faction stuff later. I was ready for some funnies with Swan, like maybe I turn him into a bunch of different creatures until he finally becomes an object and then I can return him from whence he came. Well, the game had a different idea. Instant death may have sucked the fun out of this encounter, but anything is better than trying to fight him normally, so I'll take it. If for nothing else, I got my morphing done on a nearby ghoul, and honestly, I think this shows off the mod better than any other interaction, as he went from ghoul to deathclaw to rabbit to chicken and then finally to a skill book. Before attempting to save the brave little toaster, I made my way back to Leonard for some much needed ammo. It is slightly inconvenient that I cannot fast travel straight there, but he is just over 100 meters from the Museum of Witchcraft, so it's really a moot point. Turns out I probably didn't need to buy all that ammo, let me explain. As soon as I entered the station I created a mobster Mirelurk, who then proceeded to butcher most of his former colleagues. When he turns his pinches on me, I simply turn him into a basketball. The last triggerman at the entrance I accidentally make 100 times more threatening, and then desperately try to fix that mistake. That was until it occurred to me that I could just close the door and leave him there till the end of time. Apparently the game was not done with the death claws as once more another were triggerman was born. This works out exceptionally well for me as I just sort of leave him to have his fun while he rips and tears to his heart's content. It saves me so much ammo, so hooray for me. The lead up to Nick involved a shocking amount of goo and rabbits for some reason. I also convinced one triggerman to turn on his friends, which was a welcome surprise. This effect had triggered a few times before, but it yet to actually work correctly, so I'm glad to see it was probably just a problem on my end. Dino manages to get the better of me when I turn him into a stingwing that takes away most of my health, and then rather than banishing him to the Shadow Realm, I instead gave him the speed of the Mole Rat, which allowed him to get the final bite on me before I had a chance to heal. I get the last laugh though, as on round 2, it's Crab Cola for Dino. From here I free Nick, more madness ensues, and next thing you know we have reached Skinny Malone. I run this encounter back about 6 or 7 times, and every single time it results in Nick glitching out and refusing to move. On one occasion I managed to get him outside, but apparently he was too busy to acknowledge me. Uh, rude. So after many, many attempts I had to cave and just convince him to let us leave instead. Shockingly, this actually worked first try. Back to Diamond City for the first time and there's no combat to be had, so let's just jump ahead and see what happens at Fort Hagen. I encounter my first super mutant on the way, not that that's really a big deal or anything, with this mod all enemies kinda just blend together. I channel my inner Disney princess inside of Fort Hagen as the numbers were on my side as I summoned or just transformed many of the hostile synths into a multitude of creatures that while they have no loyalty to me, seemed much more interested in dismantling the fake people. This all carries over to the fight with Kellogg as well. Not wanting this to become a save scum fest, I attacked his two synth guards first in the hopes one of them would turn into something that could take out Kellogg. 
After all, I do need the brain from his normal body, so if I turn him into anything, I am going to need to restart the fight. First synth gets frozen, which allows me to shoot his buddy, who I believe became a bottle of water. I then went back to the first and after a few more shots performed a miracle as I turned the ice into Nickelodeon slime. All that's left was Cookie Crisp and wouldn't you know it, I managed to spawn a Mirelurk with one of my shots. Unfortunately for Kellogg, he was taking cover behind a nearby desk, and while that may have protected him from me, it was ultimately a death sentence now that he was essentially trapped in a small box with a killer crab who was very determined to steal his brain. Before long he was dead and then I had a minor scuffle with the Mirelurk. I mean Molrat. Sorry, I actually meant the Stingwing. With the crab having done my dirty work for me, I can grab what's left of Kellogg, attempt to transform the Pridwin and Vertibirds into something, and then return to Diamond City and by proxy the Memory Den segment as per usual. As I am heading to the Glowing Sea and then the Green Tech Gunner's Clubhouse, I figured I would make a few trips back and forth to Leonard, just to make sure I was as ready as possible. It's mainly for Green Tech, as most everything in the Glowing Sea can be avoided with even a slight bit of knowledge prior to entering. I do make a point to go and fight Mercy for his BFG though, as per usual. Honestly it's because I heard him shoot at something else and I am attracted to big glowing objects like a moth. He misses the first shot which allows me to retaliate with my cryomancy and from there I can close the gap and promptly craft him into a hairbrush. Another good thing about this is that it's one of the very few quests I can actually finish with no issues as all I need to do is take the BFG to get the XP. Plus this thing will be worth a lot of money and therefore cover the cost for the ammo I will no doubt need to build back up after the gunners. Speaking of, let's jump ahead to that as we don't need to see me talk with Virgil as that's never different. The gunners pack a punch, especially considering I'm on very hard, so I played this whole section as slow as I could. The first couple get the item and goo treatment which helps a lot to keep me alive, and then from there when I go up one floor I summon a soft shelled Mirelurk to thankfully distract some of the others and put on the damage while I hang back trying to conserve health and ammo. I nearly bit the dust when I took a Molotov directly to the head, we call that a Tuesday where I'm from, but thankfully I was able to use a combination of the slowdown of Jet and some of the healing supplies that were former enemies to heal myself back up. Not that it matters much in the grand scheme of things as I got taken out by the infamous missile gunner multiple times in the next segment. Not a lot of strategy here, I just had to hope that one of the effects would proc that either disarmed him or rendered him unable to fight. Well, on attempt I want to say 5, it worked, as I managed to freeze him and then transform him before he could get a shot off. From here it was easy going until I reached the courser. Speaking of which, this encounter was everything that I had feared, safe scumming to the nth degree to get an outcome that lets me progress. It's not something I wanted to do and in my mind it actually kind of goes against the spirit of the run with everything being mostly random. Basically I am just constantly reloading until I can deal with him in a way that allows me to actually get the chip. I even tried shooting the other injured gunners in the hopes that one of them may transform into something, but they all must have only a single hit point as my shots were outright killing them with no effects. I do feel bad for the courser in a way as this is like living some sort of twisted purgatory where he is constantly being killed in various ways repeatedly until I get what I want. On one attempt I got super close as I managed to freeze him and then turn him into a tin can, but right before he turned there was a very brief window where I could have looted his body had I been fast enough. This, at the very least, tells me it will be possible. On my next attempt I get a new effect I hadn't seen yet, that being a mini nuke explosion. It certainly caught me off guard. Not to worry as the next try was the one we'd been waiting for as it was instant kill, meaning I could easily retrieve the chip. With my work in green tech done I was off to join the railroad, but I would feel bad if I didn't show you this exchange between Dean and the captured synth girl. Attack! Attack! Kill. Also yes, you heard that right, my plan was to join the railroad. Simply because, as I've mentioned multiple times, quests that require me to deal with set enemies to pass are nigh impossible. It's why the Minutemen are still broken, and it's why the Brotherhood is out of the question as Fort Strong requires me to individually take out each super mutant to progress. So the way I see it, I am stuck with the railroad. Or so I thought. That's not a good or so I thought by the way, it is in fact a very bad one. I need you all to watch as I open the way to the railroad just so I can prove that I did not antagonize them in any way. For some reason though, they are hostile towards me. Ironically for once in my life I went out of my way to make sure I didn't offend them in any single way possible, and yet here we are, still fighting to the death as per usual. I loaded back a few times but the result was always the same. They clearly hate me for all the previous runs where I slaughtered them for fun and are now attempting to take the advantage where they see it. Well, I need that chip decoded, and if the only way to do so is through them, then so be it. Just let it be known that they have brought this on themselves this time. 
The assistance of Glory the Broodmother Rat was greatly appreciated in taking out Desdemona. I had to finish her off, mind you, and in doing so, had her face through the floor. The final few in the HQ get frozen, good, or straight up itemified with very little problems, allowing me to decode the chip and figure out just what I'm going to do now. It goes without saying, but the game is essentially soft lock now, but for what it's worth, I did go back and check on the Minutemen, just to make sure, and as I thought, they were still waiting for me to dispose of the two non existent raiders. At the very least, I was able to have some fun outside. Attack! Getting jiggy with it. I would argue the Jiggy Raider wasn't even the best part of it. No, that was when I somehow managed to take out a vertebird with a single bullet. I'm gonna assume I turned the pilot into a pillow or something. Around here it was either stop right now or humour the brotherhood, so I said to hell with it and went with the latter. There is not a lot to say about Arcjet. Occasionally I did do something wacky, but more often than not, Dan still hard carries here due to his insane damage output. I had a minor hiccup whenever I accidentally rendered it impossible to retrieve the deep range transmitter. Thankfully I had anticipated this happening and made a backup save right before that encounter so that on my next go around I could just let Dance do it instead. So I joined the Brotherhood, board the Pridwin, watch a vertebrae perform a good old phasing technique and then get to work at Fort Strong. I made sure to keep my distance as running straight in would have had me dead in seconds. Like always, more crap spawns and some random assortment of items is the best mutants can hope for. I managed to transmog one into a ghoul, then a stingwing before finally becoming an overdue library book. I hit the chance to have the mutants turn on each other, but as usual, for some reason, it rarely worked. Oddly enough, the behemoth goes down just like Swan. One well placed shot does the trick. It looks like he became something else, but I couldn't actually find out what that was. For what it's worth, it did tick the requirement of dealing with the behemoth, so this did ever so briefly motivate me to keep going. Not to worry though, as less than 5 minutes later, once the final mutant was dealt with, I was pulled kicking and screaming back to reality. The quest doesn't recognise that the fort has been cleared, meaning I am now officially stuck with progressing the Brotherhood's story and seeing how they were my last hope, I am now softlocked. Now, could I load back and save scum the absolute hell out of every shot I take on the Super Mutants in an attempt to proc only the effects that the game recognised? Yes, I could, but I'm not going to do that. The idea of the run was to get as far as possible in the main quest with the Wabagat. Constantly reloading a save after every single shot fired until I get an outcome I'm happy with completely negates the point of the weapon, that being the randomness that ensues and dealing with those consequences. With nothing left to do, I returned to the Pridwin to confirm that Maxon had not noticed the lack of mutants, and from there I began attacking and wiping out the Brotherhood, mainly thanks to some lucky one-shots and a few Mirelurks and Deathclaws. With every single faction broken and therefore no way to construct the teleporter and proceed with the main quest, I can say no, I could not beat Fallout 4 with only the Wabagat. To be fair, I had a feeling this was going to happen. The Wabajack in Skyrim is designed in a way that makes sure that the player can't accidentally softlock themselves by removing certain effects of the weapon when using it to attack specific people. This mod seemingly doesn't have that, but if you ask me, that made it a lot more fun and unpredictable. I highly recommend it if you're wanting to just mess around with it for a few hours, there's a link down in the description if you're interested. Just maybe stay away from one of your main characters unless you want it to get broken. Regardless, that's going to be in this challenge video. If you enjoyed what you saw, consider giving the video a like and you're interested in more challenges in the future. Feel free to subscribe to one of these videos. My name is Nervous. I see everyone. I'll see you all in the next video.